It's corn dog time, but I'm all out of corn dogs. Welcome to Very Real Talk, everybody. Because <laughs> it's time for the state fair. That's is that what you're saying? Because that's over. Uh, well, yeah. Now all those leftover corn dogs are bound. All right, all right, in your garage. Yep. Well, you think you can just go pick up like a whole dumpster full of leftover corn dogs for like fifty cents? That's got to be how it works, right? No, nah, because the uh, like the FDA like pours bleach on it all. <laughs> That's why you can't pre-buy like future old corn dogs. <laughs> hey, I know these are ready now, but when you don't sell them, let me get them like seventy-five uh, percent off. Oh, yeah. it's like Jimmy John's yesterday's bread, fifty yep. cents. Last last, last State m- Fair's corn dogs. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Welcome, <laughs> sell them right up to the next State Fair. Welcome to Very Real Talk, everybody. Uh, sometimes my catchphrases are going to work, and sometimes they're not. I force myself to come up with them right on the spot, and uh, we can tell. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. We enjoy it. Uh, I'm Nick Potter, one of your very real hosts. I got a couple of boys with me again this week. It's the same two boys you know, yeah. but I'll introduce them anyway. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk to is my friend Colin Sage. Colin, Ye- tell me, what is your favorite color? Mm. Green, fuck that sucks. Yeah, what? that really sucks. Yeah. Red and <laughs> red and blue are just everybody's favorite color. Yeah, bu- 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 basic. <laughs> You're trying to be contrarian with green. Hit me with some like macaroni and cheese yellow. Whoa, what about well, see, evergreen? I know green? we could do that, dude. Life is full of the 64 or 128 box of crayon colors. That's mm. where they come from. Mm, yeah, macaroni and cheese yellow wasn't a color until they made macaroni and cheese. And they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Start melting down some old crowns. We got to mix this new shit. Hey, real talk, orange was named after the fruit. Whoa. It used to be called yellow red, I think, or something like that. Like, it was super lame. Back when there were pilgrims? <laughs> old British people were just like, yellow red, right? <laughs> That's good. That's good enough. We won't, <laughs> we won't try. I couldn't. Please, I couldn't be bothered. I have to... What do British people do? Drink tea. I don't know. Oppress. It is tea time, my good man. We can't be bothered with such pish posh. Were you going to say oppress? <laughs> oppress, yeah. Take they over oppress other people's the countries? rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking about ye olde British. Yeah. Right. Now they're kind of just like a caricature, you know. Yeah. But Ugh. back but back in the day, they were a caricature, but they would also take your spices. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those yellow red spices. Yeah. Oh, well, my favorite color is definitely green. I enjoy multiple different kinds of green. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a forest green. Sometimes, hey, dude, it sounds like you like to go outside. Yeah. Yeah, that actually, sucks. That's yeah, I love hot out there. Dude. I love like grass green. Ugh, we like live in the, Kentucky. The it's green, hot as fuck. The green of ferns. <laughs> Just uh, ferns. I want those man-made colors. Fern yeah. Gully. Robin Williams. People forget. Uh, about Robin Williams? Williams, did we forget? Ah, Fern Gully, they forget. No, no, I've seen Avatar. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Robin Williams was an Avatar. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for sharing that boring, stupid sh- favorite color. Of yours, oh, man. I'm sorry. Sucked. Sorry, it's not purple. Ooh, now that's a good sounding color. Ooh, uh, but let's Ooh, move on. Let's check this to, out. Um, Ooh, what's that? Ooh, oh, that's purple shit. box. Joey y'all. just pulled his pants down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, you, pull, roll, you, you metaphorically them. pulled your pants down on my question. He rolled. <laughs> I said, "Oh, this will be interesting." And you were like, uh, "Green." Yeah. I was like, oh, I should have c- never asked. The you. color of life. Gross. Okay. Gross. <laughs> you ever seen a green baby? So full of life. <laughs> I don't know. If my baby, at- uh, when when she came out, she was definitely yellow red. Oof. You Ooh. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Had to. <laughs> Jaundice. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. You you spelled it out for everybody. Uh, let me move over to my other boy over here. His name is Joey Potter. It's your boy, Joey. Question for you: What is going on with the economy right now? <laughs> oh man, what what the fuck? Why did I get this one? Ah, uh, the answer is green. <laughs> Making that green less green for poor uh, people. I think but... I think what's going on with the economy is the wrong people are making too much green. Yes, Dang. I think that's what it boils down to. And the rest of us, we're don't getting get no green. We're getting yellow red. I They're like, know. you want green? Go outside. There's grass. Poor. We're people. getting that yellow red. Those pennies. Oh you know? shit! Damn, we're stuck with that yellow red. <laughs> 
I hear the Dow Jones dropped or something a couple days ago. <laughs> I hear it went into yellow red. I'm so, I'm so poor uh-huh. that I don't even know what that means, and I'll never know what it Whoa, means. You know, I wish that I could. I want to understand how the stock market works so bad, and, and when to buy and sell and trade. You can trade what? <laughs> yeah. Like how many it's never Apple been easier. stocks is like grass stock worth? You know, like is there stock in grass? I don't know. It's important. Yeah. Should we put be putting grass. money towards it? Marijuana, yes, absolutely, Abs- yes. And you just like keep. You're like the people that were like growing it in their basement for years. Mm-hmm. They have these massive compounds. They're just like waiting for it to be legal. <laughs> They're heading just, on to the Wall Street floor with just like joins, right? <laughs> Tossing them to people, and the, everyone's like, "Oh fuck!" Like the Green day it's le- the day it's legalized, Green they is wheel up. in these massive wheel- wheelbarrows. Yeah, and they're like, "I just grew this today." Yeah, like, it, is there a stock for? Can I buy stock in top hats? Like, what? What is? What is stock? Well, I, I feel like the problem with that is that like four companies own the world. Right. So you could probably buy. It's probably Disney. Probably that's owns what I was going to say. Exactly. Somehow. Like I was going to like put you know? money in top hats or like and, Yum, and then they'd send like the me Yum one, brand. Right, Yum top hats. Yeah. yeah, we own KFC and top. Well, hats. Yeah, you flip, <laughs> dude. If you flip those KFC buckets upside down, they're actually just top hats. <laughs> Whoa, nice. Yeah, it's crazy. Grease tops. <laughs> Buckethead was ahead of its time. Yeah, uh, exactly. S- speaking of Joey's finances, how's Bitcoin going? Oh yeah, my it's brother's Joe's heavily invested. And heavily, I mean, he put a-, a little bit of like money. Into I put it, some but- play money into Bitcoin. Yeah, how's Bitcoin doing for the last oh, few it's weeks? Not great. Oh, no. It's not. It's. Have you it, lost money? Yeah. Oh. I've lost money, but then it goes back up, and then it goes down. It hasn't tanked past a certain point. Mm-hmm. It just kind of lives in this like. Like it keeps going between like n- high nine thousand to low eleven thousand, and it just kind of fluctuates through that. That's the price of one Bitcoin, nice. so that fluctuates through that. I don't have nine thousand invest. I don't have nine thousand dollars ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, to answer my own question, the economy's bad. We yeah, I think tariffs. So. Yeah, they say we're headed for a recession. Aren't we? Did we ever leave the last one? Yes. When Barack Obama put us all on his back, and yeah, carried us out of that recession. I right? remember that he held green cards up to our eyes. <laughs> now we see. He the green. went. Remember when he went door to door and gave us all money to get out of the recession? <laughs> it was fucking sick, man. Remember when he came to my job and yelled at my boss for me? <laughs> give Give this man more money. Give him more of the green. I got. Fine. Or I'll take your green. Whoa. Whoa. He was just go. He was busting unions. He was going around and yelling at Target managers to give people more money. I must, I must more have money. been asleep. <laughs> Why do you think Amazon started giving their employees like fifteen dollars an hour? Barack Obama beat Jeff Bezos in a one-on-one game of horse, <laughs> like basketball. Yeah, okay. and that's how oh, okay. the economy works. <laughs> I assumed rich people have a different meaning for the game horse. Yeah, yeah, it's like where they horse. hunt humans on horseback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, they hunt them with like goo guns, you know? That's oh, a, like that's... Area Fifty One goo guns? Like no, that aren't a... available to the public? No, like Nickelodeon splat goo guns. Oh, that's what the... I was thinking earlier. Is green is he also the the color of splat? It's the color of goo. I was thinking right. of everybody's uh, favorite MCU villain. Yellow jacket. Okay. When he turns oh. a guy into goo. Yeah, he did oh, have a goo yeah. gun. You're right. I have to call out one of my friends because they were talking shit on uh, Killmonger, like as a villain. They're like, he sucks. What? And it's just like, what are you talking about? He he's took like, over an entire nation. Not even that. It's just like he's like a like a fleshed out character, right? And like, like with has motivation, like good and... motivation, right? And then in the same conversation, brought up Yellow Jacket as a good and villain. I, he was just like, yeah, remember, dude, he turned that guy into goo. I was like, what is that? What the fuck are you talking? Like, I, I had to parachute out of the conversation after that. I was getting so mad. They're, like, dunking on Killmonger. Damn. And then they bring up Corey. What's his fucking Stoll? name? Col- Corey Stoll as Yellow Jacket. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Hey, yeah. Well, I'll just stop writing this letter to Kevin Feige about how I think that uh, the next Black Panther villain should have a goo gun. <laughs> <laughs> Joey got up on his horse and he rode away from that conversation. Right. Only to come back in, in full top hat to hunt those. <laughs> that's the top hat industry, dude. If rich people are hunting people, you know they are. Like, that's people joke about that, 
But I saw that episode of the old Incredible Hulk TV show. Yeah. Where some rich dude on an island, like, just That's, brings yeah. people to hunt them down. I don't mean to be a conspiracy the theorist. The most dangerous goo. Rich people get into shit that we'll never know about. I think did you hear what Colin I said. I didn't. I was yeah. on my own tire. Like not Sorry. having mortgage payments. That's what they're getting into. Yeah. <laughs> those, exactly. Those bastards. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's take this moment and move on to our first segment. It game time. All right, gang. It's game time. Get your game, game faces time. on and get ready for this game. Uh, and it's going to be a game seeing how well we can just throw together a game <laughs> <laughs> wow the game of games yeah it's, it's... oh that's what ellen DeGeneres' new show is about whoa is that what her show's called but yeah it's ellen's game of games really wow I, I watched an episode because i'm an old man and you have tv to watch and ellen DeGeneres was so bored <laughs> like usually they make these stars like you got okay like let's get terry cruz to do america's got talent because he is just like bursting at the seams with charisma and energy and ellen like <laughs> you know she dances on her daytime talk show all yeah. the time she does this like these little like half like oh my god like people know that i dance <laughs> so and i'm so i have to, i'm the monkey now I, yeah i'm contractually oh, no. obligated and she's just so bored she's basically asleep and then people are just like getting gacked and stuff. Is like, it, what is this? Is it like her show, like formatted like a talk show? No, it's a game show. Oh. And they play different games and everyone gets, you know, it's basically kind of like the Price is Right style where you play a different game and then certain mm-hmm. people go to the final round. Okay. Mm. Kind of I was thing. hoping it was more like Hollywood Squares. I and Bruce desperately Hollywood want Hollywood Squares to come and back. And Bruce Valanche. Because now I know celebrities. Back when my mom and dad were watching it, I'm like, it's just Whoopi Goldberg in there. Who are these other people? <laughs> well, to be fair, it was just Whoopi Goldberg in there. <laughs> Those other people. Everyone uh, shut up and let Whoopi talk. This is dumb. What did Bruce Valanche do? Somebody tell me. Yep. Cause he, and they treated him like Whoopi after a time. Yeah. Like he was there most of the time. Right. So... He yeah. wasn't doing anything else, and that's why he. Maybe it was self fulfilling prophecy, right? Like they, if they got Gallagher up there, they'd be like, that'd be a win for them. Oof. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was like real, like guys. The nineties kind of sucked. Uh, yeah, at the same time, well, they sucked. I guess really it was, was. I that think the it 90s was. Or was it? I don't. What I mean, past I assume the, past the two thousands. I don't know. It's probably crossed. Across the line, I'm sure it did. You know, Colin, Hollywood, Squ- game? Hollywood Squares, you know, helped us through 9/11. It's true. Yeah, we wouldn't have done it I without. I was walking soccer. around. 11 year old Nick was like, "Where's Whoopi? Where is Ron Bergeron to guide me <laughs> through? Oh, he's on uh, AFV now. Nice. nice. <laughs> Show me some more people like getting hit in the nuts, please. Yeah, and do a silly voice. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Colin, what's All this right. game that you're talking mm-hmm. about? All right, so for my game. Uh, I had this idea for a while. I wasn't sure how it was going to play out, but I think being unprepared is actually going to help us the best. Whoa, we didn't have to do anything, and it's for the best? I love this. So I had a thing like, oh, maybe we have to... We have to pitch like movie premises or pitches to each other about TV shows or movies like real fast. We don't get time to think about it. Um, And I thought, well, maybe let's streamline that a little bit more and just like sequels to movies or TV that don't exist. Mm -hmm. And then just you have to shoot it to someone else and they have, you know, 20, 30 seconds to answer it. It doesn't have to be a hard time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just see where this goes. Okay. Because some movies don't deserve that sequel. Right. But we're going to write them right now. (laughs) Obviously, trademark on all these sweet ideas. Yeah. Hollywood, get at me. We're going to TM a sequel to an existing franchise. Yeah. (laughs) I just want, yeah, I just want that. If you want to contact somebody, my manager's my wife because she's way smarter than me. Perfect. And you'd be like, okay, yeah, Nick, we'd love to buy that idea for $50. You'd be like, sweet. That's almost a AAA video game, son. And my wife would be like, hold on, no. $70. $70. Like, oh, that's a triple A video game and like some Taco Bell. Yeah, dude. <laughs> to pl- to eat while I'm playing my sweet new video game. <laughs> or just a lot of Taco Bell. Whoa. Ooh, that that's a that's to a eat shit and the darkness and just sort of staring into the middle distance. Guys, that's seventy dollars of Bitcoin right there. <laughs> I wait till my daughter goes to bed so she doesn't see my shame of just like eating like way too many like Double-decker tacos or gordita crunches. You don't want Dude, that to be your first memory. 
<laughs> they got like the double triple crunch wrap supreme now what <laughs> yeah they do uh, i've had it <laughs> yeah i've okay. seen some stuff there's a taco bell right next to my job site right now and if you want to wash your hands you basically have to go into taco bell <laughs> but you have to order something to use the bathroom are, are those like teenagers being that hardcore about you guys having to use buy something to use they the have bathroom? electronic locks that oh. the person at the counter has to flip a switch to unlock the bathroom Yikes. I didn't know you worked in such a hard part of town. Yeah, but that, so uh, not, but that Taco Bell got robbed like oh, okay. a week ago. Oh, I okay. came in, and she was like, "Hey, sorry, we can't take cash because we just got robbed." <laughs> and she was like, like so cool about open? it. And I was like, "Oh my god, it, <laughs> so you got weird. robbed at seven in the morning." <laughs> What the fuck? That's when no one expects it, man. So I think the question is, also, Colin, you... how many cheesy roll-ups have you bought? Right. <laughs> Sometimes I try to just like, all right, just give me like a 50-cent soft taco so I can use the restroom and wash all this shit off my hands from work. Then you're going to dirty it up by eating that soft taco. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. I hope now that they, now. they've made the new rule that in order to rob the Taco Bell, you have to order something first. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, sir, but you're cr- going to have to order something the ins- I, I literally can't open the drawer until you order <laughs> one of our delicious Fiesta Bowls. <laughs> that's not, sell, that's not a bad something. idea, because the, so who's robbing them at 8 a.m.? Like, the meth head, the person who's not thinking. Right. Just like, that's 8 a.m., time to hold up this Taco <laughs> He Bell. started his, he went to bed thinking, I'm not going to do meth anymore. You think he and went he to woke, bed? <laughs> right. And this he is fell on a, asleep on a bench thinking, you know what, I'm done with this meth stuff. And then he woke up and went, oh no, I actually still do want meth. I better rob this Taco Bell <laughs> to get the money. He took all the cash and just used it as like a blanket. Like he didn't even like <laughs> use it for money. No, but this is on a very busy street. This is for Louisville people, Bartstown Road in the Highlands, which is like the That ha- Taco Bell that, got robbed? Yeah, the happening place. It's, Oh damn! So you're you're not just like robbing a place. You have to then walk out into this super populated area. <laughs> like right. you didn't rob a Taco Bell. Yeah, day a.m. bold. I, they got away too. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Yeah. You guys want to rob Taco Bell? <laughs> so we'll this game. Yeah. So this hey, game. anyway, this game. <laughs> yes, yeah, the game. Um. Yeah. So I'm just gonna throw a shitty sequel. Uh. Or, actually, you know what? My first one isn't shitty. Okay. The latest. Tom Cruise action movie. We're on what number five? Six. Six, six of Mission Impossible. Yes. Yeah, so. Nick, give me number nine. Number Ooh, nine? nine. Yes. That's true because I did. I just saw that actually, and I did read that they're filming seven and eight back to back. Fuck yeah, man. So okay. here, Tom Cruise yeah. has got to shove it all in. Jump. Yeah. He's jump like, ahead. I'm getting old, please. Okay. So if we're going to nine. Tom Cruise is old, right? It's like the year 2022. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they're cranking these bitches out. He's old Tom Cruise. And he has to go back in time. Whoa. Ethan Hunt. Uh, the IMF has created time travel, right? Uh, under uh, yes. the ghost of Alec Baldwin. Um, yep. <laughs> they created time travel. So he's got to go back in time and fight himself. Whoa. Whoa. Like pre first mission. Wh- impossible. Which one is accused of being the double agent this time? Because he's always he's being al- accused. Yeah, he's always Whoa. disavowed. He's always being like, <laughs> no, he's the bad guy, right? He's like, they, he always saves us. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? Do they How many end- times are we going to fall for this? Do they end up teaming up at some point? Yes, because here's the villain. Here's the true villain it's- Adam Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's obviously The Rock, right? Like, let's get The Rock into these Mission Impossible movies. All right. Are you saying seven and eight aren't going to do very well, so they're going to bring in the franchise fixer? The Rock? (laughs) No, that's just where they have to take it. They're like, we've done these, like, stale, British, like, almost James Bond-esque villains. Let's get... We're, right. we're almost doing, like, a... a it's a Hawk A Dark Knight Hobbs. Rises. Like, old Tom Cruise is going to have to fight jacked... Muscly The Rock. All right, and you know, obviously, he's trying to stop him from like, you know, blowing up Kansas or something. Yeah, the Kremlin. <laughs> like, you I'm know. Try- I-, I literally tried to think of a place that haven't blown up yet <laughs> or threatened to blow up, and I think Kansas might be there. Yeah. And uh, I was born in the darkness, jabroni. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gives him the people's elbow. Dude. Whoa! Yeah, what if they went full like 
WWE Rock. Oh, so <laughs> so it's not Dwayne Johnson. It's oh, right. The Rock. You think by it's the wrestling persona, The right. Rock? You think by 2022, The Rock is gonna invert and like come back around to being? <laughs> He's gonna grow his hair back out and lose a bunch of muscle mass. Right. <laughs> all right, Nick. Well, I have to ask you because all of the Mission Possibles have, especially now, the 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 centerpiece is the big stunt. Bi- oh right, like the the halo jump. Yeah, the or halo jump. Him holding on to an airplane. Yeah, him um, climbing the Dubai Tower. Don't know the name, but he did it. What's the big stunt in this film? Uh, that's an easy answer, Joey. By the time we're at nine, yeah, you know we're going to space. Obviously, right? Yes. So yes. Tom Cruise is going to have to jump out of a spaceship to land on Mars. <laughs> it's like crashing, but he's got to jump out, climb on the side. Whoa. It's like the it. reverse Martian. Where yeah. It's like shooting <laughs> yeah. off of Mars and catching a spaceship. Yeah. He's jumping off the spaceship to catch Mars. <laughs> yes, he's got to he... catch Mars before he falls out of the gravity. Is he going to go full Wally and like jump out with a fire extinguisher? Absolutely. Nice. Because uh, The Rock is actually on Mars, and he's Sarge from Doom now. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> sorry, I'm not crossing franchises like that, <laughs> oh, Joey. Okay. So, sorry, sorry. We're going so sorry. time and Except space. I will. He's going to fight the ghosts of Mars, actually. <laughs> what? Oh, fuck. But it's just John Carpenter. Yeah. Just like... 150 year old John Carpenter. And he doesn't actually use a fire extinguisher. He uses Ving Rames. <laughs> <laughs> he blows all the air out of Ving Rames. But it's it's Ving just v- squeezing yeah, it. It's Ving Rames from the future, though. Don't worry. Oh, okay. okay. It's like, uh, speaking of that, real quick before we drop this premise, because I love it so much, uh, how does the time travel work in this movie? Is it just standard machine or they do something weird? Does he jump off a building, Will Smith style? <laughs> Does he no, then like three it? Does he back to the future? It's just got to be some like weird gadget. They always have weird gadgets. What right? What if he has to go into space, and that's how we bring the space part in? Is maybe he's trapped in a storm, or maybe they have to time travel like outside of the atmosphere? Oh, that's yeah. Okay, <laughs> they've discovered time travel on Mars, and that's going to be like the opening stunt. Is him in like a spaceship, <laughs> and it's like about to crash, so he's got to like jump out of it. All and right. land on Mars so he can travel back in time. Okay, I buy it. Ethan, I know we sent you to Mars, <laughs> but try not to die on me this time, buddy. <laughs> I feel like that's Ving Rhames. He's just always in the radio. Now I'm like, picturing hey. trying to run on Mars, but it doesn't look very good because the gravity is all weird and he can't run. As... But he looks immaculate running, right. so it works. Okay. Ving oh. Rain's running behind him, and it's just yeah. like he's just like floating away. But oh. Tom Cruise is just like short man running. That's why they from do a it low Mars. angle. Because <laughs> Tom Cruise is like, I have to look good running, and they're like, Tom, you're too old. There's not enough silicone we can pump in your body. <laughs> and he's like, Take me to Mars. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> he does all his own stunts there. in those things. He spends, so. he spends from 2019 to 2022 training to be an astronaut, and they actually go to Mars to Get shoot. Get me this. on the phone with. Can Elon you Musk. imagine Tom Cruise stepping up to face the Rock, and the Rock cocks his fists like Henry Cavill did in Fallout in the bathroom, where he just like throws his fists in front of him. God, it's so good. That I'm getting, fight scene is I'm sick. I'm about to get like goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah, oh, sorry. I guess I have to watch this movie, dude. Fallout's so fucking good. Yeah. You think that it's just like oh, another Mission Impossible? No, since four, they're just like they just keep going. Yeah, up in it. That's why know. in nine they're I gonna kinda, end up in space. I kind of like three, except I had to watch it two days in a row in the movie theater, <laughs> accidentally. You guys need to shut off their fucking phones. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to talk about Mission <laughs> Impossible three. You Your piece phone of shit. went off earlier. <laughs> that was not my phone. My phone's on vibrate. Okay, then it was Nick's phones twice. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Went Mission Impossible three. Saw it like with some buddies, like opening weekend. Night, yeah, with and your was, boys. And I, yeah, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Next day, I'm hanging out with a different friend. It's his birthday, and he's like, hey, it's my birthday. Let's do something. I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? I'd really love to see Mission Impossible three. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> okay, or we can hang ourselves. Okay. Yeah, and even though I thought it was good, uh, it was still. I remember it being so painful. Like I was just sitting in the theater. I'm just gonna like, hurt you. Just yeah, like, you didn't like Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> he was really, he was so fucking scary in that movie. He was. All right, thanks uh, for that, Ethan. I'm, let's let's move on. I got a premise for you, Colin. What's that? Uh, it's pitch me 
the next Saw movie. And not the one with Chris Rock and whoever else is doing it. <laughs> what? There's a Chris Rock Saw movie? Yes. Yeah. Okay, actually, you know what? Pitch me the Chris Rock Saw movie. <laughs> because I don't know anything out. about it. Oh. I think this is eight? It's either eight or nine. Right. Maybe ten. Who even knows, man? It's Chris Rock. Okay. And all of the Waynes brothers. <laughs> the, all the Wayne's cousins, okay. anybody with the name Wayne's. So there's 3,500 people in this movie. Yes. Uh, I think they do a, let's call it, is it Halloween H2O where they're like trapped in the house, but like for fun? Like they yeah, go, it's like, like for a web, 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 web show? Yeah, yeah, it is. I think Gross. <laughs> I think they're going to do a web show. Okay. Uh, maybe it's like... Um, I, don't know, I guess not. You can call it Instagram. a live stream. Yeah, it's Facebook. <laughs> it's oh, they're Facebook. Show. They're Facebook living. Yeah, uh, they got Chris Rock in there. Whoever he, stays gonna, the longest gets the most Zuck bucks. Chris Rock's gonna play himself. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ooh. I'm gonna go and call that. He's gonna play himself, and they like swindle him. It's like a half comedy where they're like. Oh yes, uh, like ha- the first half of the movie is like a heist movie where they kidnap Chris Rock. Okay, and then the second half of the movie like morphs into a saw movie. Yeah, like Chris Rock wakes up with a bear trap on his face. Yes, right. But the Wayans don't mean to do that. They're like trying to capture Chris Rock for like some other thing. To like, okay. hey, we've got this show idea and we're going to mm-hmm. pitch it to you. Um, and out of desperation, they kidnap Chris Rock. <laughs> and they take him to an old abandoned house, but it's the Saw house. Oh, they don't fuck. Know. It's like an old, like, like he, Jigsaw was going to like put somebody in there, but oh, like, I he think some people him, are already. Like, the guy got away. I think some people are already in there. Like, the Waynes are like, oh. all right, bring him into this room. So and it's then they, Saw 2. They open the door, and there's a guy with a reverse bear trap on his face, <laughs> and they all look at each other, and they're like, yeah, and then Chris Rock says, I don't know, something about you just brought me to this crazy white people trap house. Yeah. And uh Oh, and you like, know no. that there'd be a trap house joke for <laughs> yeah. sure. Oh, oh yeah. There'd be like ten. Yeah. And it they'd all be in the trailer. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I don't think this is a half bad idea. That like total switch of genres. Like it's a silly, like heist, like um, Airheads, if anybody saw that yes. from the 90s, like, gotta take over the radio station because they just have to hear our track. Mm-hmm. So, like, I gotta kidnap Chris Rock because once he hears my comedy premise, he'll have to, you know... Laugh. Yeah, laugh. <laughs> he'll be forced to laugh Whatever. because we are the Waynes and we are very funny. Use this Chris Rock money. But then, instead of turning into a goofy horror, it turns into, like, like a hardcore a hard gore fest. And they get... Yeah, and they have to escape this house that they brought him to because... Oh man, yeah. I love it, that. The something the tagline is like no la- last laugh or something. Like he'll no, have the s- last laugh. Saw trap house. That'd be the title. <laughs> oh, saw a trap house. I saw the most I dangerous saw trap, house. trap house. <laughs> I saw the trap house. I saw the trap house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There it is. That's it. Hollywood call me. <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy. All right. Uh well. Joey, we would give you one, but we need to move on to our next segment, okay? Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would be. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to our topic. Let me tell week. you about 17 again, too. Fuck. <laughs> Guys, do you know what my least favorite feeling is? Um, testicular torsion. No, it's worse than that. <laughs> it's being let down. Oh, didn't you have kidney stones? Yeah, <laughs> so I would know, wouldn't I? <laughs> I guess you would. Being let down is my least favorite feeling. Over pain, letting the, <laughs> like <laughs> if I were in the saw house, I'd be like this. Like these needles in my face are nothing. You'd be like compared to. Uh, the letdown. Uh, like I thought, this experience was going to be a lot cooler, Mister Jigsaw. <laughs> Man, you're like I got some Chris Rocks in my kidneys right now. Damn, <laughs> got a toilet. The design of your trap house leaves a lot to be desired. I'm very upset about this. I thought I was going to be one of the guys that got to sit in the bathroom and saw my leg off. 
This is just really letting me <laughs> this down. This is just a needle pit. <laughs> this is just a dumb needle pit. <laughs> and I don't have any life lessons I want to learn. I appreciate life, so I don't know what I'm doing here. I've seen like five needle and pits he's like, in my life. If only you appreciated the Wayans brothers. And I'm like, no! <laughs> That's a twist oh, for your movie. Oh, and they movie. come down on strings like uh, that NSYNC? Or back yes, it was NSYNC. Yeah, it was NSYNC. Got it. NSYNC music yeah. video? Yeah. But they're dead this time? Yeah, sure. Well, okay, yeah. They're That's, dead inside. I imagine, oh, they have, they're I imagine, covered in I'm needles. I'm imagining the sequel to your movie. Oh, okay. Is that, yeah. like, I wander, me, Nick, I wander into the Saw Trap House <laughs> after all the Waynes have been killed. Okay. Oh, but well, you think they're all dead, but then they all come out with pig masks on. <laughs> and you're like, oh, we really up the end. They're really just dead inside. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so I was like, I now have eighty-five disciples. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say eighteen. I was like, there's more Wayans. Than that. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, he didn't kill them because he realized they were already dead inside. Anyway, I hate being let down, and that's what we're going to talk about, guys. Um, we're going to talk about the biggest hype letdowns of our individual lives. Yeah. Because we've all been super excited about something, and then it came out, and we were just really sad that it wasn't as good as we hoped it would be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and kick it off, because you guys kind of already know I already mine. know it. Yeah. yeah. It's one of mine, too. Yeah. I was there. Uh, here it is. Uh, my biggest movie letdown, Spider-Man 3. Yeah, it's right? got to be. It's got to be. Yeah, man. I like superhero movies were like new and uh, Spider Man like, Two me, was so good. Like, Spider Man Two was so good, and I mean, I literally remember being in high school. I told our friend Justin Barlow that uh, I would do anything to see Spider Man mo- Spider Man Three, including <laughs> murdering him if it t- if it came to that. If someone's Whoa. like, I won't let you in until you kill this dude. I mean, the hype was that real. It was that real. I don't remember any of this hype. But what the but continue? Fuck is. I Why saw, are you here? I saw, you continuously across both podcasts, subscribe to Varial Tournament. You <laughs> continuously disappoint me. You're the biggest hype letdown hey. of my yeah. life. Oh shit! Whoa! He was so excited Whoa. when you joined these podcasts. He and was. Then you did, and like, it turns out you haven't lived any sort of life. This guy seems like he's you got like some green. You don't know about the Spider-Man three hype. Who the fuck are you? <sighs> yeah. They, Man, I was so yeah, disappointed. I'll tell you about it so later. So sad. <laughs> I was just watching it and I remember feeling so like. Well, dude, that was the first insulted. movie. That was like before Fandango and everything. Yeah. So it's like we went to the theater weeks in advance. Right. We got our tickets. Yes. I had that Eight. ticket in my wallet for weeks. Right. We were in that theater. Somebody brought fucking beach balls. We were throwing yeah, beach we were balls throwing around what? in the theater. Well, yeah, this it was, was back in like hypest. 2007, man. Yeah. We didn't and have then our the movie made to started. Play beach balls. 2007. And the movie started there in a web in the <laughs> trees, and a symbiote meteor hit Central Park, and no one noticed. And it, <laughs> it was so dumb. And then it like did some Spider-Man stuff, and then there was a Sandman. And, and then and, they like, retconned Uncle Ben's murder. <laughs> yeah, they fucking retconned the whole thing. <laughs> Why? Why couldn't they move on? <laughs> And then Jay, they had to solve all the James Franco bullshit, but they had to have a whole rest of the movie, so they gave him amnesia. Like, why? Why did they do that? He uh, was on a fucking snowboard. I, like, I saw the movie late. I had to get it from the library. <laughs> Nerd. We were there. We were there, and I was so sad. Don't, I rewatched it recently, being like, it can't be that bad, right? Like that was just hype let down. And it's still bad. It, the pacing's it's, it's really weird. It's not as bad. It's just not. They they shove in the whole Gwen Stacy thing. And yeah. Like, and yeah. obviously Topher Grace and all that. All that other, you know, I'm not even going to mention the dancing. Like, yeah, that sucked or whatever. But, yeah. like, I think that was just a comedy misfire, really. Mm-hmm. I think that's all that was. Yeah. But it's all, it's actual movie problems that really bother me. Uh, but yeah, that's my that's one of mine. Uh, Joey, do you want to tell us about one of yours? Uh, that is one of mine. But uh, most most of my other ones that I can really think of are video game related. Okay. So uh, this one is kind of like more so in hindsight, but I knew I kind of felt it then too. Mm-hmm. And that's Halo Three. Yeah, that was a big one. That was a that was a big letdown. Whoa, for why sure. didn't you like it? So. Uh, 
my little background on my middle school uh, <laughs> history. Oh, nice. um, I met and kind of uh, like got a lot of friends through Halo 2. We played so much Halo 2 together. Friends that I have to this day, 15 years later, were because of Halo 2. And we were so hyped for Halo 3. Me and my friend Chris wrote a fucking wish list of what like <laughs> ideas for Halo 3. Like, I'm pretty sure he could find that document right to this day about what we wanted Halo 3 to be. And we came out and we were young, so we were like, this is great. The campaign was, you know, it was good enough and all that stuff. But Playing the multiplayer, I just thought I was bad at shooters, and I was just kind of like, oh, mm. this is the new game. I didn't really fully have that functioning like critique mm. in me. I was just like, everybody likes this. It's a huge thing. This is it. This is the game. And then, yeah, looking back on it now, and since then, they've re-released it with the Master Chief Collection. Right. So you can go back and play it whenever you want. Nice. And man, is it a fucking trash fire. Mm -hmm. It's just like... What they took from Halo 2, which was a great, you know, you know, very flawed game. It was I I think Halo 2 is beautifully broken. A lot of glitches that you can still exploit, all right. that kind of stuff. Halo 3 got rid of all that. They slowed down the gameplay and made all the guns inaccurate. It was yeah. just like, how did I even play this game that long? It was just a massive, massive disappointment, somewhat in hindsight, because I still put a ton of time into it, but right. it was also because that's all we had. Right. It was just like, oh, it's Halo 3 time. Halo 2's right. dead. It's Halo 3. Yeah. This is what the It's either that or like the is. newest Call of Duty bullshit. I mean, Modern Warfare was out then, and that was pretty fucking good. But uh, yeah, fuck Halo 3. I agree. That's, that, <laughs> that's one for 3. me, too, because I, I guess there was just nothing to do in Southern Indiana in the mm -hmm. year, like, you know... 2007 2007 because that's how me and my friends friends that i have to this day uh started hanging out as i invited myself to their halo parties <laughs> oh nice <laughs> that's how you got to make friends you got to be aggressive you know not too aggressive but aggressive not enough right. to get put in them the in door. a bear trap yeah aggressive you, enough to get in your friend's mom's basement and hang out yeah you, you don't want to steal their dna or anything just, right you know you i didn't want to be them <laughs> want to wear their skin leather <laughs> what me and Joey were just like, we've hung out enough. We're <laughs> Let's go and make separate friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except I was invited to a couple of those land parties, too. Turns out you're real cool, Joey. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Dang. If you couldn't tell by now. My brother's cool. Leave him alone. <laughs> All right, Colin, what is one of your biggest hype letdowns? All right, I'm going to give you two real quick. Okay, okay. Back to back, because I can't really get into detail about either of them. Without for, each for, other? Well, no, they're not related, but uh, for obvious reasons, that'll become. Okay. All right, so a video game. Uh, first off, Fable. Oof. First game was great. You right? got tricked. Loved it. Yes. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Okay, great little game. Uh, for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, and this is why I won't go in super detail, because people, a lot of people are just like, video games, Fable, what the fuck? Yeah, beforehand, you're LSD like, garbage. make sure to explain it. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? In my head, I was like, it's Halo. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody knows Halo, kind of. Right. I'm not going to get that deep. Yeah, what you're about like, the normies? Fable. The normies, Joey. Then you brought up, because you had in your head Fable, which right. is like, right. what the fuck are you talking about? Okay, well, it was a fun, like, <laughs> yeah. fantasy medieval game with a lot of dry British humor. Yeah. Um. Anyway... So Chicken Chaisa. Yeah. Then the it was great, and then the se I played the shit out of it. Then the second one came out. So hyped! It's on mm. the new system, so it's all HD. Yeah. Um, playing it, I'm not like super in love with it, but I'm like trying. Like this is gonna be awesome, right? I spend an exorbitant amount of time, like making sure I do everything possible in the game before I fight the end boss or whatever, like the big bad guy. Right. So I. Just play for many hours to like make sure my magic is strongest and make yeah. sure my all the items and all the shit because I'm like it's about to go down and I want it to be a good like ending to this game uh -huh. and I'm gonna be so ungodly powerful but it's gonna be hard it's gonna be great. Um, there is no end boss. <laughs> yep, they fucking. Uh, Peter Molyneux yeah. got you again, bitch. They pull you in and there's the, there's the main antagonist right, and you're in this thing. In this chamber, and he's like, I've got you, like, you're fucked. And I'm like, all right, here we go. 
here we go. And it's like, and now I realize, oh, I can kind of move around, but I guess I can't do anything. I'm just like letting the bad guy monologue. <laughs> right. And then I accidentally hit like the shoot your gun button and I just shoot him and he dies <laughs> immediately. Yep. And that was the game. <laughs> and apparently, I found this out later. I couldn't believe it. I played it again <laughs> and didn't do that thinking that's just like a silly thing. And if yeah. you don't, you actually have to fight him. Right. No, your buddy wakes up next to you and shoots him. So you can do nothing. <laughs> absolutely and it still nothing. Ends it for you. And the end boss it's is like a, defeated. It's like a Call of Duty game where if you don't do something fast enough in the campaign, the other person, the other AI just does it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's like the 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 big baddie who you hate this whole time is like it written kind of well, and uh, and then he just dies no matter what. There's no end fight. It was all Peter Molyneux. Molyneux probably was like weeping when he wrote that ending of just like it's going to be so pertinent, right? And yes. uh, yeah. He subverted expectations. Yeah, he did. Well, and, he pulled uh, the, old, the old Ryan Johnson. Right. And we're <laughs> speaking of. Uh, I got my expectations subverted so hard. <laughs> my other biggest letdown is I bought into the Star Wars hype. Yeah. Guys. You fucking fool. I didn't want to. I, I didn't buy into the Marvel hype. I didn't buy into any of the other hypes. I'm like, I was laughing at Nick when he was like, Infinity War, dog, we gotta fucking see it. I was just like, eh. <laughs> I saw the teaser trailer, I guess. And that ended up being amazing. And I was pleasantly surprised. But... I decided, I made a conscious decision that, you know what, just once, I'm going to go all in on the hype. <laughs> just once, I'm going to get into all like the pre-prep. You know, sometimes I'll watch trailers, sometimes I won't. I don't really care. Right. But this time, I was like, give me all the trailers. <laughs> give me all the background footage. Give me all the shit. All of it. I'm so pumped. I actually really like The Force Awakens. Yeah. There's a lot of problems, but afterwards I was like, that was fun. They right. needed to make that movie. Right. They yeah, needed to that, like make that movie as like a sequel reboot to convince people of just like we know what we're doing. Even though it's just a new hope again, it's like we you know, practical effects, like the important shit. Like right. we know what we're doing. And this is where where I'm giving you the double, because I won't go into detail on this because we'll be here all night. But <laughs> Yeah, I lo I really enjoyed the Force Awakens. I was like, man, that was fun. Like that was cool. There's new ideas. Like I, you know what? I'm just gonna buy in. <laughs> I'm gonna put all my cards in this. And I was so so pumped. And uh, just being there and like feeling all that energy just being like sucked out of my feet <laughs> with a vacuum as I'm watching it. So very similar to Spider Man Three. You know, say the dance scene where yeah. you're just like, ooh, this comedy's not hitting. What right. the fuck were they thinking? That was like the opening of the movie. <laughs> like, just immediately you're hit with like really jarring, stupid ass comedy. And it's like, oh. All right, a swing and a miss, but we saw the whole rest of the oh, movie. Oh, man. That's what I thought. I kept, I kept whispering uh, to my girlfriend. I was like, it's okay. They can still stick the land. <laughs> because Rogue One. I, did, I thought the first half was terrible when I first saw it. It was so confusing. Yeah, but the then, last third of that movie was right, but then it, incredible. It stuck the landing, and I was like, that was, you know, I don't love the movie, but, man, it really stuck the landing. And I was like, it's okay. I can, this uh, Last Jedi can still stick the landing. I can still stick the landing. <laughs> like, I was just whispering it to myself, and every time some new stupid-ass thing came up, I was just like, ooh. And still stick the landing. <laughs> just some of the stuff is so out of you know subverting expectations. It's uh, just pulling that, a curtain back and nothing's there, and it's just like woo, right? But that like ten times, yeah. Like, it was cool. That the was first the whole time, movie. But then when you just like keep doing it, yeah. But I would argue that in another way, he didn't do that. He added weird shit like Leia Superman fly. <laughs> Like, that's not like, oh, no, she's just dead. If he had done, like, the you subverted your expectations, she just died. Yeah. I, I would have been like, oh, okay, well, I don't necessarily like that, but I get, I'm get, i on with that. But it's like, you didn't subvert. You came up with some stupid shit and, like, shoved it down our throats. I, so, I might have to cut you short, Colin, because we could talk about The Last know, Jedi gotta, for another hour. But yeah. which the right. we plan to do. We I will. once Once Rise comes out, because if you couldn't tell, this... Uh, trio of of boys right here have some very hard opinions about the Last Jedi, and we will 
we will set a time aside, like set some time aside to to flourish that we'll get there closer to to rise because yeah. you know years after all the internet people have given their two cents <laughs> we will give ours i will say real quick on last note on this thing is that Co- we went to go see it like me and my wife and some other people and colin went with us i was and, there too okay he re- he did not tell us that he had seen it he yeah. was just like yeah let's go see it and then he just waited yeah he just waited, staring at the back of our heads right. the whole movie. I was like, I was genuinely curious. Like, right? Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I thought that. Yeah, yeah he I hated out it there, so much. Like... He's like, I gotta know what these other fucks think of it. <laughs> and we just walked out there and we're like so confused. And he's like, right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> It's like that's not that good, and you're like, I know, right? I know, I saw it before, and it's I garbage. Said, and I just <laughs> wait till you, till you sit up tonight and think about what you saw. <laughs> it gets worse the more you think about it. But yeah, that basically, without getting in details of the movie anymore, um, I that was the, like one and only time in my adult life I decided to buy into the hype 100, percent and I was so thoroughly disappointed that I'll probably just pirate this last movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, it. Embarrassed. I'm with you. Uh, I got I got another one for you guys. Okay. Now it sounds like a downer. Okay. But it's not. Okay. So here's one of my biggest hype letdowns, and just roll with me on it. I think I know what's coming, <laughs> but go for it. I don't think you do, Joe. All right. Life. <laughs> oh. <fuck. laughs> oh no. This is my fault. No. <laughs> no. More specifically. Uh, like adult life, that's like it, it. Like it can sound bad off the bat, but like being in college and like being like I'm done with all this. Like you know, other people tell me what to do. Like I'm gonna go out there and do my thing. I'm gonna get my theater degree and I'm gonna go do stuff. And then you walk into the void. And then you walk into yeah the void. Like no one cares. Me and it's like we all don't care. Oh, you're new here. Get in line, fucker. <laughs> Like, this sucks. It's a grind. <laughs> and your little dream can go eat a dick. Yeah. And it was just that, like, hopefulness of, like, and, and naivete. naivete. Yeah, because here's the problem with, uh, like, college. You think you're independent. Yes. And then you realize that you're still in a sanctuary. Yeah. You're still in the sanctuary of structured life. Of exactly. Going to class and yeah, you can yeah. leave class and go home and beat it or fucking, you know, hang out go with hang out right. with your friends. You or, can go to the school library you know, and beat hang it. Hang out with your friends and beat it or like <laughs> just, just beating it everywhere because you still have that libido or whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's like and then you get out and it's like all Crickets. right, pay your health insurance. Yeah. Pay your car insurance. Pay you, your phone bill. You, and you don't you set your own goals. Yeah. There's no there's no one. There's no teacher telling you when the papers are due. Yeah, you know, and you, it's, you literally. It is only up to you. And if you are left to your own devices, you will plummet. Yeah, and I'm realizing this sounds worse. I like my life, right? Like it's cool. I have a, a beautiful family, daughter, wife, great friends, podcasts, and all that stuff. But it, I've just had so many. Um, and then like, you were also on the other side. To, to add to it is that all the shit that you learned, you realize you know dick. Right. You know absolute dick. You're like, what's a checkbook? Yeah. What's, <laughs> what's like, insurance? me and my wife were, like, like, looking to buy houses a couple years ago, and I just thought that it was possible, like, to get a regular house for a reasonable amount. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, if you want to live in the area that you want to live in, in a reg- like, and I'm like, I just want, like... Two bedrooms, two toilets, man. And Fuck like, you, two ma- toilets. Yeah, it's two toilets. Two no hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Your mortgage is fifteen hundred dollars a month. Fuck you. Yeah, it's like and- I heard. I heard rent is more expensive than a mortgage. It's like yeah, for your shithole. <laughs> yeah. It, I- it just blew my mind how much I didn't know because I, you know, we didn't come from a lot of money, Joey. Yeah, and we had a pretty regular house. Yeah, and that's the kind of house that I thought was okay to have, like for for lower, like you know, yeah, high I- poverty, lower lowest middle class. Um, I just thought it was possible. <laughs> I was like, oh, life sucks, man. I can't get a regular house in like a neighborhood where there's not prostitutes hanging out every night. Like, Tight. Yeah, man. What? I Not too long ago, I was looking at houses just to get an idea because 
you know, I want to buy a house, but, you know, I deliver pizza, so I don't show much on paper. Right. And so I was just looking, and I was just, like, in the ballpark, and I thought I knew what house costs. Like, I could look at a house and be like, yeah, that's a hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand. dollars And uh, to put it in perspective, where we live, we don't have that high of a cost of living. It's true. Yeah, it's, it's on the, yeah. Indiana it's on the lower cheap. side. We're complaining, but if we lived on the east oh, or west yeah, coast, dude. we'd be living in a closet. Yeah. And just like, oh, I wish I saw a tree once. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Like, like, it's please. all relative. Obviously, New York is like insane and like you can you have to live in a I'll, closet. I'll just throw it out there. Right. I live in a three bedroom, one bathroom house and I pay eight fifty five for the rent. Right. And right. that that's Which pretty normal. Some people in the world are like screaming. Right yeah, they're now. paying eight fifty five for their fucking bedroom in you know Chicago or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, right. w- my mortgage for my current house is like half, like more than half cheaper than the rent I paid for a basement apartment <laughs> with one toilet, four people in Chicago. Yeah, like we have it pretty good down here, but it's all relative because while. Our cost of living is low, so is our... The cost of the prostitutes in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, so is the money we make. But because, hey, you know, yeah. But I'd yeah. say those prostitutes aren't aggressive. <laughs> no, know. they're not, right? I've been in that neighborhood a lot, and you know, they're they're pretty nice prostitutes. And yes. uh, you know, people aren't really getting mugged either. It's it's no. just the prostitution that's bad. Yeah. And they don't really I bother just, you. I'm, I'm, real, I'm looking to get out of it before I have to explain <laughs> to my daughter what those women are doing. You know what I mean? Like, why they're there every night. Yeah. Um... But yeah, it's I, I've just had since college had so many points in my life where I'm at like these different crossroads and I just have to make a decision and go with it, you know? Yeah. And it's it's just not what you expect. And I think every generation learns that. Mm-hmm. My daughter will learn it just like we did, that life is just fucking like, like you can't idealize it too much because it's just life and it's yeah. hard. So yeah, it, it, yeah, it's just when you're a kid, all you want to be is an adult, and when you're an adult, all you want to do is go back and have less responsibilities. Speaking you know? about less re- responsibilities, let's get to my one of my big letdowns to to cap this off on a higher note. Okay, yeah, bring it back up, Joey. So one of my biggest uh, video game letdowns uh, is a little game called GTA Four. Yeah, I thought about Ooh, this too. Yeah, yeah, because uh, that that's another game that got me into video games mm-hmm. like m- in a more serious way of just like we had our super nintendos where we played the marios and the bullshit sure but you know when the ps2 came out gta 3 came out we played it at our you know second third cousins distant house you know at you know some extended family we played gta 3 and we're just like oh we need to get this yeah let me get into this so yeah we got super into gta 3 super into vice city mostly into san andreas yeah yep. that game was awesome it was you know it was huge it had a ton of you know uh just like weird stuff in the game right like huge sprawl of like weapons and in different places and all that kind of stuff and then GTA 4 came out, and it's just like the most streamlined by the numbers, for especially for a controversial game. Right. You know, GTA's always in the headlines. But yeah, GTA 4 was just this sad drab, <laughs> you know, New York City. The driving was awful. The guns were awful. Nico, you have to come play pool with me or <laughs> yes. you lose the game. <laughs> Let's just play bowling. Yeah. yeah, it just added all this kind of arbitrary stuff. You could go see Cat Williams do a two-minute stand-up set whenever yeah, you wanted. Yeah, remember when he was big? <laughs> but yeah, that game was just such a bummer. All of it sucked. All of it yeah. sucked. The you know the stamina systems, the fucking driving, the you, you know like they were trying to elevate their the like the game and the craft of video games, and I think they just missed the mark so fucking hard. What if this annoying character is always calling you to do minutia <laughs> that you don't want to fucking do? Immersion, Nick. Right. Immersion. What if when I'd you rather... drive a car, it feels like you're driving in spaghetti? <laughs> and it's like, I'm going full speed, and I'm still in spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this happening? I'm not having fun, because I'm in fucking spaghetti. And then uh, the midnight release of that game, we got accosted by a homeless man. Yeah. I oh, remember. nice. That was awesome. Oh, that was your GTA experience. Yeah, right. For it. They paid that guy. 
we were outside of GameStop. And we we're like, why is he driving through spaghetti? Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm why a file inviting, civil suit. Why is he? he yeah. He, uh, why is he inviting us to go bowling right now? <laughs> he said, "If we don't go, we're gonna lose." <laughs> and then he pulled out a bunch of spaghetti from his pocket. <laughs> Fuck that game. Yeah. Oh. What about? Uh, here's just a mini one to throw out, to you guys. What about the last Airbender? I was I reserved my hype yeah. a little bit because I had just watched the whole series. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, fuck yes, let's do this. And the trailer's like, your name's Ong. Yeah. It's like, fuck! That was the one that is just like, yeah, the hype was cool because the series and everything, but then you you saw something. You saw like like, two bits of the trailer and you're like, I hope, I just hope it's not all that. Oh, it is all that the whole time? (laughs) Oh, oh, The whole like 80 (laughs) minutes? Yeah. Are you minutes. the Avatar Ong? <laughs> like, like it it wasn't even a Japanese show that they like could miss up the right. names. It was an American made cartoon <laughs> and they couldn't pronounce any of the names right. Soka. Man, watching Sucka. what makes that Sucka. what makes that even harder and cringier is if you go and watch the interviews with M Knight and he's like Oh man, my kids love this sh- love this cartoon so <laughs> then much. Why'd you do they, that? Turns out we, I hate my we kids. We watch it together. <laughs> we like love this thing as a family. Like it's so <laughs> special to our like familiar relationship. I promised them I'd make a movie about it, and then it's like somebody who's never fucking seen a single <laughs> episode who just like a deaf man explained it to him, <laughs> and, he, and he's just like. Okay, good enough. No, nah, yeah, we, we okay, don't need so to, we don't sucker. Need to okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My my uh my hot take from back then was the, the twist in Avatar was that he tricked us that it was going to be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the M Night Shyamalan <laughs> twist. Yeah. That you were like, "Oh, there's a bunch of movie left, right?" to explain all this shit. Yeah. Nope. I got I got one more if we have time. Yeah, sure. Just throw it out. It. Uh so we were talking about when I became, you know, much more of a gamer with like GTA. Uh, Nick, you were the one that had the PS2. Yup. I got myself a little Nintendo GameCube. Nice. Yes. And uh, with that, I got Smash Brothers Melee. And you, I you loved that game. Oh. I loved it so much. I played it all the fucking time. Absolutely. I was the I was the kid that was like I'm the best at Smash at er- like no one, you know, whatever. Uh but then uh you know, the Wii came out and everybody was just like, "Yeah, the Wii." And it was just like we bought into that. That's another disappointment right there. It's just the Wii in general. In general, yeah. But more specifically, uh Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Yeah. Yikes. So uh, to get a little nerdy on it is my main since the first game was the main uh, character you play with. Yeah, the main character that I that I fought with was uh, Samus, Samus Aran from the Metroid series. Right. Whatever. I play Brawl. I start playing her. I was just like, oh, she sucks. Oh, oh no. And then I was like, start playing other people, and just like oh, these mechanics suck. <laughs> what? I played it for the what first night. Doing? I got it. I played it for 13 hours straight. Yeah. I fell asleep playing the game because I was just like, it's new Super Smash Brothers. It's been 10 fucking years <laughs> since this shit came out. It was really five. But when you're that young, yeah. well, you know, whatever. But yeah, I played that game and it's just like, they Halo 3'd it. They slowed it down. Mm-hmm. They got rid of the glitches. They got rid of everything. And it was just this like cookie cutter by the numbers mainstream bullshit <laughs> and they they like they took the soul out of the game and it was just the biggest disappointment that after i realized that game was trash i sold my wii Whoa. i was just like it's all you burned over. it down it's all over i this mean is the utmost of trash once you play wii tennis it's all downhill for you. <laughs> it really is there's really nothing like you think when I my the, your first experiences with the Wii were like tennis and bowling and you had fun with your friends, it was right. something different. But then if you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go in on this thing, there's nothing there. Yeah, I remember being so hyped, like, oh fuck, you can use the nunchuck as a samurai sword and cut motherfuckers <laughs> down, and you're just trying to use it, and the sword's like shaking all over the screen, and it's oh, like man. not keeping up with you. And I bought uh, Star Wars: The Force Unleashed. The new oh, you Star were ready Wars to game. go ham I on I bought some... it on the Wii because mm-hmm. that game looked... I was also hyped for that game. Yeah. And it wasn't bad on the Wii, but you had to do everything. Swing Oof. and use the force and like all with your hands, right? Like yeah. Like you're swinging them around. And it seemed real cool. 
Until like 25 ten, minutes. Yeah, I was going to say for 10 <laughs> minutes. And then all you want to do is just sit down and play a game. You're, you're tired yeah. at the end of the day. You just want to relax and kind of decompress while you play this game. You have to stand but up and become swinging, a fucking Jedi. Right, and as, yeah, as like the game's getting farther in, you just like all these complicated moves and you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And you it's try not doing to, what I want. You're right. You try to do it sitting down, but it was so precise. Like you had to get perfect right. in the sensors. And you're just like, fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, I just want to relax. Like you're just trying to like lay one leg down, like just like trying to slink into your chair. One of my uh, one of my friends would use. Uh, I think it was it was actually I think it was Sam from you know the Thumps, and uh, he would use uh, a Dragon Ball Z fighting game almost to like work out. <laughs> because you had to do all the moves, oh, even yeah. in a two D fighting game, you had to do all the moves. And was, it was it for like, Xbox three sixty? Because I also had that game for the Connect. Well, he got it for Wii. Oh. He, he he got the Wii version, but yeah, I never fucked with Connect. <laughs> so yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> also, the PSP let me down real bad. Oof. I had but like dude, two games had... and a Dave Chappelle stand up special on those little mini discs. What I thought we had Spider Man two. Didn't we have Spider Man two on we there? We might have. Or am I thinking the Punisher? We had some movie on there that was just like, I don't know. Oh, you're right. It was the Punisher, the <laughs> the Thomas Jane Punisher. Ooh, with Johnny to, to watch on a I three inch screen. <laughs> remember <laughs> so revolutionary being 15 and like PSP just came out and a buddy brought it to school and he had a porno on there oh. and he was like showing us at lunchtime. And it wasn't like, oh, yeah, porn, perfect. I love watching it with all my friends yeah, at school my, lunch. With all my teenage friends. But it was more, sick. like, mind-blowing to me because there was no phones like yeah. this at the time. Right. There was porn nothing. was somewhere other than your home computer, basically. Right. There, well, or movies, too. Yeah. It was so, like, foreign to me because I had never fucked with, like, mini DVD players, like portable ones. Yeah. So I'd never seen anything like it. And it was just so crazy that, like, oh, this is, like, a real thing. It's not like all digitized and shitty. Like it's a real fucking movie, but it's like in his hand. Like he can yeah. carry it around. Yeah. He put it in his pocket. And that was like <laughs> I also eventually looked up porn on the PSP. Nice. Didn't we all? I don't, did you? I don't I don't did, think I did. Did we share? I, did we share that? <laughs> <laughs> it was our PSP. I never had one. Was it was that were the games okay? No. PSP? No, it wasn't no. very good. Lame. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't very good. You mm. saved up so much money. It, yeah. I, the second I got my job when I was 15, I had two envelopes. One was for general, like, hangout movie gas. The other one had the letters PSP written Whoa. on it. Whoa. And I was making, like, $100 a week. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting paid five and a quarter to make pizza. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, it was pretty tight. So, all right. Yeah, there you have it, guys. Those are some of our biggest hype letdowns. The porn SP. The porn SP <laughs> made me so sad. I was like, make it bigger. I need to see those boobies. PlayStation Pornimal. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Joey. Nice. Just sitting in the cafeteria with a bunch of kids that you thought were your friends who were like, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. And it's like, oh, you're weird like that. Uh, all right. Yeah, I hadn't introduced this new thing into your life and... Now I know how you react to this, and it's upsetting me. Right. Now I know how you're just so free with it in public. <laughs> yeah. I keep you away from the computer lab. Shove all that shit back in your closet. We don't want to see it. <laughs> Get out of here. Speaking of getting out of here, we're going to do that in just a second. First, uh, I want to tell you guys about our other podcast we do it's called very real tournament it's a comedy battle cast where we pit two very real opponents against each other in a very real fight we do that with our friend Corey music uh you can find that and this podcast on our website vrtcast.com you can also find this podcast and the other podcast uh, anywhere you get your podcast itunes uh podbean stitcher spotify we're everywhere so please tell your friends tell your family check us out Right. It's a lot of fun. That other podcast, a lot of fun. Very real tournament. Yeah. Remember that. You want to have fun? Get on in here. That should be our slogan. <laughs> you want to have fun? Come on in. Get on in. There's fun in here. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, we're on social media. We're on Facebook, Insta, uh, Twitter. So if you guys want to tell us about your biggest hype letdowns, we'd love to hear them. Talk to you guys about them. 
please tweet us, email us. Uh, we're going to make Joey go through all of them. Yep. And he's going to tell us about all the porn you all watched on PSP. Can't yeah. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Don't send him any links, though. <laughs> Unless it's like really good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that grade A. Yeah. You know. Joey's not going to tell you what he's into right now. Great. Just buckshot. Scattershot him Great. with whatever you got. Grade A PSP porn. <laughs> Oh, life is weird, isn't it? Yeah. But also, don't forget to go check out the Thumps. They made the music for this podcast. Uh, you can find all their music on all the streaming services, or you can go buy their albums at their Bandcamp, the thumps.bandcamp.com. All right, guys. Let's get on out of here, okay? I'm Nick Potter. I'm Joey Potter. Colin Sage. It's been real. It's been fun. And it's been hyped as hell. 